you read the title, so why? In the past, I used to be super big on TRPC and the T3 stack. In the past 3-4 months, I haven't used TRPC a single time and I've been doing hella good without it. I do not want to be dependent on TRPC to be able to move forward to the newest Next.js versions. When I initially moved to Next 13, TRPC didn't support it. They do now and even now I don't think they support the newest versions of Next.js. So that's a complete deal breaker for me. So the question resulting from that would be, Josh, what the hell are you doing instead? And the way we achieve full stack type safety without something like TRPC is by using a schema validation library. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, we're gonna walk through it together. This can be anything like Zod or Yup, it doesn't really matter, I personally prefer Zod. And we're gonna create a type and a schema, those go super well together. Then in step two, we can make use of the type. This is where we are going to make the API request and we're going to use the type to validate that the payload we're sending out of the page.tsx is going to be of the type we have defined in OR step one. And then the schema is going to come in in step three where we have the actual API route handler. The schema is what's going to validate inside of the API endpoint that the type of data coming in from the page.tsx sent over in a post request is going to be of the correct type. So if we receive any data that we're not expecting, it's gonna throw an error and the request is only gonna be successful when the payload that we're sending over is matching exactly the schema we have created. Let's see how this looks actually in code. It's gonna be way easier. I've prepared a little example here. A Next.js 13.4 project where we have a button. When we click this button right here, this function call API is going to make a post request to our API endpoint that is hosted right here under the route.ts. This is our API endpoint. We are only reading the body and sending back a okay response. However, currently this has nothing to do with type safety. How the hell do we implement that? Because after all, we're currently completely missing step one. Where did we do that? We didn't do it yet. So I'm gonna do this inside of the page.tsx. Remember, we want to declare a schema and a type. Normally this goes into a separate file, but for readability, I'm going to create this here. Inside of this schema, let's call it API request validator because this is going to validate our API requests and this is going to be something we import from Zod. This is where the schema validation library comes in. And I'm going to create an object from this. And what I'm doing inside of this API request validator is defining the shape of the post request that we're making. So say, for example, our post request had a name property and the name was John. This is going to be our post request. This is not type safe yet. So we are going to create our z dot object and this object is going to get a name property and this name is going to be a z dot string this is a specific syntax we use for these form validation libraries it differs from library to library but the principle behind them is the same we define a certain shape that we expect our data to have currently these are not linked however and the way we can link them is by creating a const that we call payload and payload is going to be a very specific TypeScript type that matches or schema we have created up here. And the reason we are creating this type is to ensure that whatever we send in the post request will always match our schema right here and have a name property that is of type string. And in Zot, this is super easy. We can say type API request is gonna be equal to z.infer. And this takes a TypeScript generic that we can pass the type of API request validator. And now we can see when I hover over this, the type of the API request has a name property that is of type string. So we can enforce that type on the payload right here. We're gonna get an error, which is awesome because TypeScript notifies us that on the payload, we're still missing a name. And this name needs to be of type string. If it was anything else, we would get thrown an error. So let's call it John. And now instead of directly passing the payload, let's just append the payload to our request. That means we have now enforced type safety in the request that we're making. Because if we change this property, we will get an error and we can always ensure that the payload we sent over in the post request matches this specific type. And this is precisely what I meant with the schema and the type. Take a look at this. This is our schema right here, the API request validator, that's our schema. And then below that is the type that we infer from the schema. So it's always going to be the same 
as the schema. And now that we have enforced type safety where we make the request, we also need to enforce it where we get the request. And to do that, we're going to use the schema we have created up here. I'm going to export this again. Normally, you would have this in a separate file. And it seems we have to have this in a separate file, actually. I wanted to include it here for readability, but let's just move it over into a separate file then. And now enforcing type safety in or actual API endpoint could not be easier. Let's say const data is going to be equal to, and now we're going to make use of the schema that we have created. I'm going to paste the name of the schema, the API request validator that we can simply import. And on this, we can call a super cool function called powers that we can pass the body. You know, the body can be anything. Anyone can send any data to this API endpoint. After parsing with our schema, we are making sure that whatever comes in is of type object with a name property of string. If it had multiple properties, including the name, those would just be stripped away, only leaving us with the name property. And because we are sure this exists, we can also destructure this. And we are sure this exists because if this fails the parse operation, this is going to throw an error. So normally you would want to wrap, wrap this in a try catch block and then return a new response, unprocessable entity. I probably butchered that and with a status code of 422 because we don't know how to handle the data that they sent over. And now we are sure we have a name property in our backend. If you take a look at what we have just achieved is we made this part right here type safe. This now works. If we pass anything else than the payload right here in our page.tsx, we're going to get an error right away. If I wanted to pass an age of 22, error doesn't work. Great. However, we haven't made that second part, this one right here, type safe yet. And you understand how it works though. So if you wanted to make that part type safe as well, you could do the exact same thing. Whatever kind of response you're expecting to send back, create a schema for that API request response. And this is also going to be a Z dot object. I generally recommend objects because you can destructure from them and the naming tends to be a bit easier. And for example, we could have an error property that is either a Z dot string, or this could also be op oops, optional. So we don't have to pass an error. And then we can pass something like the data, which is also going to be a Z dot string if your data was a string that you sent back. Okay, cut here. I spent the next five minutes explaining the same thing just for the other way around where you first define the type of the payload and then validate the incoming data on the other end. It's the same thing as you already know. I'm not going to bore you with it. This approach has worked super well for me and I'm sure it will for you too. Try it out. I think you'll be flabbergasted in how well it works. That's going to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.